Um, it says we're not live on Twitter. Hang on, let me check. It looks we are live on uh, YouTube. So hey. good afternoon and good evening, everyone. I'll have to check the Twitter account in a moment. But yes, we are live. Hello, how are you? Nice to see you all. All good. All good. It's very good to be here. Lovely. Thank Hi. you so much. We, we're we here tonight with Angie, Giselle, and Sparrow. So we're going to have a conversation about crypto art and the wonderful art that you guys have been working on recently and the latest project. So I'll pass on the word to David to give us a quick intro about non-origin, and then we'll dive into this live conversation with all of you. David, off to you. Hi, firstly, thanks for everyone for joining. Um, I'm David Moore, one of the co-founders from Known Origin. Um, we're the best place for limited edition digital artworks that are verified on the Ethereum blockchain. And um, we have just over 480 artists on our platform. Go check it out, it's uh, knownorigin.io. Um, and we also do a thing in collaboration with Mokta, it's called Behind the Screens, where we get awesome artists to come and do a live stream and we talk about kind of their inspirations, their process. And then we have uh, Giselle, Sparrow and Angie. I've had the pleasure of talking to Giselle on a panel for Snot the Art last week and I'll speak to Sparrow occasionally on live, on live chats and we catch up. Uh, I've not had the opportunity to chat to Angie before but we just had a quick chat before this. Uh, I just want to finish by saying this whole scheme wouldn't exist without the artists, um, and that's why we focus everything on them. Uh, and that's that's part of our mission, is to literally like focus on this. None of this crypto art scene that's happening right now would exist without these people. So behind the screens is a great way to kind of get, get, get an understanding of who these people are, get a bit of background on their artwork, and I'll shoot off, jump on the live stream. If you have any questions, Hit me up on origin underscore that I on Twitter and I'll get the questions over to the guys. Thank you for everyone for jumping on and I'm looking forward to this one. You guys are awesome, so I will see you soon and have a great evening. Wonderful. Thank you so much, David, and thank you for the, the great introduction as always. See you soon. Bye bye. 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 Okay, so we already have have quite a big crowd watching us tonight so welcome everybody who's here tonight or this afternoon or this morning so thank you all for joining up so we're here tonight with angie giselle and sparrow so we're going to be talking about your recent projects and your collaborations and the wonderful work that's been done so far around the the crypto art women groups that have been developing recently so uh, without further ado, I would love to have you giving us a quick introduction about yourself and your work, and then we'll we'll share some work that you've been uh, creating recently. So Angie, I'll start with you. You're here on my side, so welcome. Uh, How are you doing? Hi. I'm good. Thank you for having me and inviting me to take part in this alongside such three brilliant people, well, four including David. Um, yeah, I started as a sculptor. I did sculpture degree at art college, and then I left, did prop making, was a DJ, did lots of various jobs, then became a motion graphic designer for 25 years, but always really wanted to get back into doing fine art. And um, COVID was probably the biggest, well, two things. One, I got an artist mm -hmm. residency at Fusebox in Brighton, which was great. It introduced me to VR and, and um, new technologies. And then, uh, yeah, COVID hit, so the business just kind of boom, closed down a little bit. So I thought, well, I might as well try doing my art, but I didn't really know how. And then I saw Algo Mystic, who's a friend of mine, doing some stuff on crypto art and just said to him, what's all this about? And that's it. From there, I've just kind of uh, fallen hook line and sinker into the world of crypto yeah. art. 
and discovered yes this magic world yes and all these new friends yeah. i suppose yes. yeah and an amazing community yeah. yeah that's the best thing about it really Mm -hmm. oh, and the that's art. so true <laughs> <laughs> of course that, that's what brings us here right and Giselle yeah. how are you we had a chance Hello. to speak in the past but it's so nice to meet you again and to have you here in this panel it's so nice to speak with you guys again um, so I am an artist I've been an artist pretty much my whole life um, studied art when I was a kid just drawing as much as I could, copying everything, painting, um, doing pretty much anything, drawing, or just being out in nature as well. Um, science has always been a big influence. Um, so went to RISD, did a whole bunch of things there, studied photography towards the end of it, um, went into commercial photography after that. Uh, Studied, went, studied behind all great photographers, saw so many different styles, so many different um, ways to capture things. Um, then I started on my own. I had started my own business with still life, kind of a, a very focused route. Um, and I've been so obsessed with photography since then. Um, it's been like 15, seven, 15 to 17 years of just like, Capturing different things, video um, is now a, a thing I've been going into also. It's like a macro style uh, video work. Um, everything with my work is about waves. Uh, right now, mm. light waves, water waves, uh, the waves of our being, kind of trying to visualize those, those aspects of our lives. Um, that's where I'm headed, and blockchain is a really beautiful way and community to be sharing it to. Yeah, yeah. Well, I couldn't find better words to describe the work that you do. You, yes, of course. You, you just, Thanks. yeah. <laughs> I think the art that you do is simply astonishing, and the work that you've been doing since joining the community has been noticed by many. So, thank you for. All the great work and art you've been producing. I love it. And then we're the one and only Sparrow. <laughs> Hello. The you? legend. <laughs> yes, the I'm, legend. I'm good, thanks. Hello, everybody. It's great to see all of all of you in the chat and saying hello. I'm I'm glad we've got such a, a big audience. Um I everybody's heard my story before, I'm sure. Um, I didn't go to art school. I'm completely self-taught, but I've done art all my life. Um, my day job is as a software engineer. I've done that for over 23 years now. Um, about four years ago, I decided that art was important enough to give that a, a larger slice of my life. Um, and so I began doing um, daily practices. Um, I've taken one course now, uh, which was a one-on-one a -on -one workshop with um, an encaustic wax artist. Um, so really I came into art through encaustic wax or I found encaustic wax soon after I decided to take art seriously. Um, not long after that, I tried, I was exploring um, provenance for physical artworks and found blockchain. And as they say, you fall down that rabbit hole and the rest is history. Um, that was two years ago now, I guess. And, you know, the, I came for the technology because that's my background. Um, I found the community, and the community is definitely why I've stayed. Mm -hmm. Yes, I think that's, you know, often the element that brings people together, or at least keeps them together. There's often an interest that uh, mm -hmm. attracts you towards something that you like, or you want to learn more about. And then once you find a family, it is, you know, what keeps you in that place. And I think this is a little family, you know, I think the group that has been sort of growing over the past few months, um, COVID mm -hmm. as well, 
been one of the reasons that we've been more in communication with one another. Um, yeah. So I would love to chat about that experience. Um, so this wonderful group of women that gather around uh, Twitter and Discord and keeps talking every day and communicating and inspiring one another on creating art and talking about your latest projects and art experiences that you've been sharing and the exhibitions as well. So we have quite a few topics and um, I also want to invite everyone watching live to share comments and uh, send questions through. So we'll be happy to discuss live. I'm sorry that we're not currently streaming live on Twitter, but we are on YouTube. So if there's anybody hanging around in Twitter, please share the YouTube link with them and uh, we'll see you here live. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so I would love for Angie to tell us a bit more about how this group of crypto women artists came together if you like, alongside Spy yeah. as well. And then we can show some of your great works. How does that sound? Okay. That sounds good, yeah. Um, I, I started putting together a list of female artists that I was following. Um, and I noticed how quiet they were on Twitter. And I thought, I think that these people need an injection of confidence or something, or we need to kind of... I, I just felt that there were people who were massively talented that weren't getting the recognition that they deserved and maybe weren't mm -hmm. as visible on Twitter as I thought they should be. So I made a list so that I could kind of focus on their tweets and share their tweets a bit more. And then Spow started a, a um, private message chat message thing, Twitter message thing, um, with the same group of people and then it just grew and grew and grew. And we just all started chatting and uh, we started talking about having an exhibition. And um, I said, well, I've got a place on crypto voxels. I could clear it and just put an exhibition there. And that's how she art started. We just, I just wanted to give people a leg up really and help as much as I could in the, a way that I thought I could. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not always very good at kind of being parts of committees and collaborations. I'm always a bit like nervous about getting involved with things, but it, it was really great. It worked really well. There was no arguments. There were discussions and debates, but it never turned into anything more than a debate and a discussion. Like, you know, there was, it was so nice to work with such a, talented group of people where there wasn't any competitiveness. People just wanted to help each other and promote each other as mm -hmm. much as promote themselves. And that was just lovely. But it, it just, it was incredible. Yeah. I think it happened in two weeks from the start of the discussion to actually having the exhibition up and running. It's quite incredible to hear that because often when there's exhibition planning and set up, it takes years <laughs> and mm -hmm. you know, plenty of emails and conversations before actually you reach an agreement on how the install or which pieces or what type of curatorial you would like to have. And and Giselle, did you feel that before these groups sort of naturally formed, there was uh, somehow an equality between women or um, artist, male artist, for example, within the crypto space. I think it's it's inherent. You know, it's it's a uh, it's changing. There, there's there's so much we can, so much effort we can put into coming together mm -hmm. and just showing what we have to offer. You know, it's just the more the more we get seen, the better the better it is. Uh, the fairer, the the more equal we can all we all have a voice, and I think it's all it's it's good for everybody to be seen. I think I think being seen is key, right, mm. Giselle? I, it allows people outside of the space, so other artists, to mm -hmm. to look at what we're doing and go, well, I could do that too. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I think that that's really key because mm -hmm. if they don't see us there, then they might think, oh, well, that's just an old boys club or in, th there are certain circles in art that, that are like that. And I'm, 
I'm rather passionate that this space is does not become like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it feels like there is a good good community behind it and a good vibe going on. You know, we're all here sort of like supporting each other. I see people here in the live chat and I can definitely recognize a few faces, you know, virtual faces. Um, but that's so wonderful to see that kind of support. Um, so it is great that it is a very welcoming and friendly space. Uh, living the judgment outside uh, often helps us uh, seeing the art for what it is and appreciating it. So um, I would love to to have you guys sharing your screen now, if you could, and uh, speak about some of the works you've been um, working on. So Angie, shall I start from you? Uh, yeah, let me just. Uh, of course, share and the yeah, everyone here, feel free to send your questions if you have any for Angie, Giselle, and Sparrow. Um, what you find below is also the links to follow them on Twitter, so you can see more of that works as well. So I'm just going to be adding your screen here. Here we go. Can everyone see it? Yeah. Yeah, so what I might have to do is just turn on my Oh, we can't hear you now, but we can see the screen. <laughs> so I see this is part of the exhibition you have put together. I can't I can't hear the audio, so I don't know if there's a, any audio here, but maybe you can just uh, unmute yourself and give us. Uh... Hi there. Can you hear me OK, now? I can hear you now. Yes, yes. I think it's best if you just yeah. give a, a description of what we see. Uh, OK, this is uh, the. Ah. So for some reason that movie's not playing. Um, I'll play that later on. But this is um, one of my sculptures in VR land, which is a gallery space that we're looking into for um, a permanent exhibition home for uh, a Women of Crypto Art exhibition. So this is mm -hmm. me testing it out with just some of my sculptures. <coughs> uh, this is one of my sculptures, like, like an AR sculpture that I used to take out on dog walks with me <laughs> and every time I went out on a dog walk I would put my sculpture somewhere and then sort of sit with it and video it and it now belongs to Trevor Jones so he has that pleasure. This is another of mine, this is the first piece that I did that um, is actually to do with cryptocurrencies. Uh, most people I think miss it because it's very fast but can see the currencies like swirling around as characters jumping up and down the globe. I won't talk too much about the subject matter, but I'll just show you a few things. And then this is a mm -hmm. video of the She Art exhibition. When when did the show happen? Because you guys were telling before about how the whole exhibition came together in just about two weeks and it was such a great yes. success I can see from yeah, the works so we, we and had the audience an actually inside. Yeah, we had an opening party, which was really, really good. And then um, after the party, there were quite a few artists got back in touch with me to say, is it too late? Can I join? And I just felt really bad that we, it was mm -hmm. full up and we couldn't accommodate them. So I decided to clear another floor of the gallery and start a second floor. And because we'd opened a second floor, I thought we should have a second opening party. So we had two opening parties. Of course. Uh, yeah. And <laughs> so we had it's a like good time to have a party and enjoy floor, some art. And it was really good. Yeah, it was really good. Uh, and I think and we're this talking is in now about having a closing party. Yeah, this is Crypto Voxels. This is my space. It's called the London Gallery. So mm -hmm. I, I, I kind of have changing exhibitions there. But mm -hmm. I am thinking about offering and a floor permanently to Shi Art. I think 
think it would be good to have a space in crypto voxels that's just permanent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Giselle and Sparrow, were you both exhibiting in this show? Yes, yes. Um, actually, so for the first opening, um, I had the piece that I'd tokenized um, just like the day before or something. And then for the second opening, again, I had just tokenized a piece. So both both of those were, were there and both of those sold. So I'd say it was a successful exhibition. I think I'm the only artist to didn't sell the piece there. <laughs> really? Oh, no. <laughs> well, well, just, just wait, know. you know. Because uh, I'm never know. I'm not you never know. <laughs> Sell it down. <laughs> I feel like the audience hasn't even begun. There's there's so many people that mm. will find out about it. <laughs> yeah. Yes, that's the true. Actually, if you don't mind to share the link to the gallery, maybe in the, in Twitter, um, people can go and, and see it as well. And for how long is the show going to be open? Well, that's debatable. We were talking yeah. about the end of October, but um, we seem to be slower at deciding when it's going to end than we were deciding when mm -hmm. it was going to start. But that's OK. Well, I mean, I'm, definitely... I'm, I've, got, I've got another exhibition You'll definitely have to up, invite so us have to, to clear one for a bit. Yeah. Oh, I see. I so, see. But just, yeah, uh, definitely let us know when the closing party is going to be, because we'll definitely want to join. <laughs> Oh, and um, wonderful, wonderful. So we've got a couple of questions here. Uh, one is about who is your favorite female artist of all time? And I wish for the question to be asked to all of you. Who's been your favorite artist? Who's all, my who favorite your favorite artist? Female artist. My favorite is uh, Mary Course. She's the the painting. She makes these paintings out of this like, like almost the reflective glass that they put on streets at, for nighttime at, on the paint. Like, it has this ref, this glow about it. This refraction, reflection. Her her whole art, all her art is about the light and the way it interacts with the, with you. You know, and that that to me is inspiring completely. Hmm. What about you, Sparrow? It's a toss-up um, between Georgia O'Keeffe because she was the first woman to really hold her own in the art world. Um, and Helen Frankenthaler, just for her use of colour. Mm -hmm. I, I choose between the two. <laughs> I'm just... Uh, pasting the crypto voxels link to the parcel into the private chat for you. Um, it's Thank really you, I'll share it now. It's really hard to choose one, but I think probably Laurie Anderson for me. Because, <gasps> um, <laughs> <laughs> because she's just, you know, multidisciplined. She, she tries everything and she's just amazing at everything she does. And I love her spoken word stuff. I love like, I'm quite old, so I remember when Oh Superman came out, which was a big hit single. <laughs> and um, I remember just thinking, oh my God, because it was so completely different to anything that was around at the time. And everyone was like, eh? Hey? <laughs> I just loved it. <laughs> and I've loved it ever since. I love the VR um, stuff that she's been doing recently mm -hmm. as well, and all the mm -hmm. environmental stuff. So, yeah, Lori Anderson, probably. But there's. Well, it's Linda Starling, I love it all. Mm. It was I would a montage artist. It oh. would be a good project for us to compile a list. It's a good idea. So that people, you know, can be pointed to all of, because there are so many. Um, it is hard to choose. Yeah, so true, so true. I have kind of like a follow-up question that I just came up with um, yeah. about who's your favorite artist, which I will follow with, how do you see your favorite artist in a way have influenced your current art practice in the crypto space? Hmm. Do you so think my, that 
has sort of influenced you in any ways or, or maybe not or inspired you, Sparrow? My affinity with, with Georgia O'Keeffe is um, she wouldn't let anyone tell her what her style should be. And I find a lot of inspiration in that because, you know, for I don't really have a style that, you know, I is <clears throat> the, 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 the medium changes, the composition changes, the subject changes, the themes change. And, you know, the, the George O'Keefe exhibition at the Tate that was here a few years ago mm -hmm. uh, really demonstrated the fact that, you know, she followed her own vision and her own passions and made, you know, made her own way rather than following others. And to me, that's, that's probably the key takeaway I've got from her. Thank you. And what about you, Giselle? I feel like the last conversation we just had on the on the panel with Snark Art, Eve Sussman, that the way she has used blockchain to to piece it together, to to have a community hold one piece of artwork, I find that super inspiring. Uh, the first artworks I did on blockchain were uh, physical pieces that were put to communicate this new language to people that have never heard of it before. Um, I split one of my photographs into, into 39 different coins and I signed them like a traditional piece of artwork and I QR coded them so that they would be, belong to the NFT. Uh, I, I find the idea, you know, they call it fractionalization, they call it like um, pieces of ownership I think in terms of investment, it's it's okay. It, I'm sure it will make people money and, and be good, but I think in terms of a community, it's way more exciting as a concept. Uh, I think mm -hmm. Eve Sussman really does that well with that piece that she, that she put together. Thank you, yes, no, that's a great, uh, that's a great one to, to be mentioned and Angie. Do you think that, in a way, the artists that, that you like have inspired your practice within the crypto space? Definitely. I think um, in terms of Laurie Anderson, a very similar thing to what Seth Sparrow was saying, is just the feeling that it's okay to just say, okay, today I'm going to do music, tomorrow I'm going to do sculpture, yeah. so, you know, the next day I'm going to do cartoons, I'm going to do painting, and that's very much what I like to do. I like to have, I don't like to be dictated to in terms of like, okay, you have to do that one style and just keep to that. Although mm. I do follow, it's like I have four different styles, but I keep following them throughout my life. So you can kind of see the trail of them. And I guess Laurie Anderson is very similar. Like she has music that's always going on. She has her kind of new media, digital media stuff that she's always following. And then she has her um, art, which a lot of it is written word, but like her VR piece, it was a, a huge environment, like a maze mm -hmm. full of words, which was really incredible. But there's also sculptors that really influenced my sculpture. Um, Jacob Epstein, who's not a woman, but is a huge influence on me. Um, and also like popular culture influences, like Spitting Image, the, the Muppets, Jim Henson, um, animation like uh, Bachelor and the Last, the animators that made lots of great animated films. Robert Crumb, Tom of Finland, uh, Linda Starling, like I said, there's, there's so many influences from so many different walks of life. Um, but I think it would be impossible just to have one style. It encompassed all mm. of mm -hmm. those influences plus everything that comes yeah. from inside the head. Yeah, I mean, what you're saying now is so interesting. It makes me think because I see also people in the live chat watching this live that I've been talking with, and um, somehow 
some some of them some artists they feel the the fact that once they get recognized for the style they bring in the crypto space um there's a sort of increase in demand of having more of that and so there's a sense of not wanting to leave that style to somehow the fear of losing something to to have the freedom of discovering something else although you know you have the audience that follows you and may love what you do so i think there's always that internal conflict of wanting to explore a new path but at the same time um keep keep walking on 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 the path that you've been sort of like more familiar with um so well, that's I, an interesting point yeah when i when i was a dj i used to have this thing that i'd, I'd be djing and people would gradually get on the dance floor the dance floor would be full and then i'd be like right, I'm going to put on something really left field. And the dance floor was just completely empty. But that was the time that I liked it the most, was like, like bringing in the thing that would empty the dance floor. And sometimes I think I do that with my art as well. I go, right, I'm going to try something really, you know, like, mm. I don't know. I end up, I'm not very good at like sticking to a style and doing the whole marketing thing and being really kind of focused on making it a business, I suppose. I Angie, I like, I, like your art. Pissing is, people off a bit. <laughs> I feel like you have a very strong style. I, I think your your style is very clear. Um, you know, because you've stayed true to what you're looking for. That's that's Thank the you. that's how you make a strong artist, no matter what medium you're you're using of any sort. Mm -hmm. I think, it, but it takes time. I think it's very. I think it's a, it's an interesting topic because you come into the space, and the ones that sell really quickly are the ones that have a very consistent style. So, I That's think it, it will take a lot of time for artists that do have different um, aspects of their art that come together in in specific ways. They will, you know, it, it takes time to build an audience that can understand that. I think that's, you know, that will come mm -hmm. with time. And maybe in a way we can start educating the audience in appreciating art that is not expecting, coming yeah. from the same art, you know, and kind of like being um, surprised by what the artist will come up with next. Even though I have to say, if I like an artist, and this is more from a from a consumer point of view, I somehow feel not disappointed but in a way you know if you see hockney for example exhibition and i only say that because i have a poster here in my room on the opposite wall um you would expect that kind of style so i'm just talking here from a more general perspective so if you do see something completely different and i think when he started creating uh works on ipads and having digital works the audience sort of like post for a moment before fully appreciating the work and the artists and the way, you know, the art was evolving. So, you know, just a thought there on, on both sides, but that's that's an interesting conversation. Um, but so sometimes I think you have to do, you have to go through phases where you create stuff that people mm -hmm. won't like, and even you won't mm -hmm. like, you know, I create a lot of stuff that I don't use or show. You know, a lot more of my stuff is stuff that I don't show in public. It, it was in yeah, that short, it. the short that you that I that Serena uh, mentioned uh, about the Tate. They had a, a Agnes Martin, and she apparently mm -hmm. ruins all her work and like only leaves just a few. You know, um, it, it, we are our own editors uh, as a photographer, especially being an mm -hmm. editor. Is, you know, you have to. You know, you know what you like. You know what you you know what really ends up being important are those photographs that you just they come back in your life they like remind you yeah. it, it's like remember like i remember this mo you know it's just it keeps coming back in your life it's like a recurring dream the ones that don't let you go yeah the, the important pieces that just like keep coming back and then you learn more about them even and sometimes you know it can be the aesthetic but sometimes it's the meaning of it so what comes out is not always the same shape form or you know <clears throat> image that you had in mind but it has the same message that you feel the urgency of conveying so sorry Sparrow go ahead I mean so one of the other artists that I, I really admire is Robert Motherwell right and he returned to themes over and over again throughout his 
very long career. Um, and I, I, I kind of see, you know, that as probably the, the most fruitful path because, you know, there's a problem that you're trying to solve. There's something you're trying to communicate and you need to experiment with other things in order to be able to return to that problem with new information. And that's kind of how I see all of the different paths and pursuits that, that, that I've taken is I'm trying to find new information to solve that problem that I was put here to, to try and communicate visually about. Yeah, absolutely. And, and why do Sometimes it's not even intentional. I mean, you know, you don't know that you're doing that. Like, like uh, when I, I got into roller derby for, for a while and it was like, it was mostly about the community. Like it, it, it started about, you know, I love roller skating, great. But, <laughs> but like the community of girls that I found were so awesome and tough and, and like, dedicated to like improving physically you know like how fast can you do this how, how quick can you like um and that to me translated into my photography like like wanting to know about that fast moment that like moment of impact uh it, it's like it ends up like translating your experience in life completely translates in your in artwork uh that you're creating at the time all the time yeah well, thank you so much for sharing these different experiences. I think it's, uh, you know, it sort of enriched the conversation so much. Um, but I want to now give the opportunity to Giselle and Sparrow to show us some of the great uh, work that you have been doing recently, because I know you also tokenized something um, a few hours ago. So Giselle, would you, would you? Be able okay. to show it to us? I'm going to screen share. Let me get this. this open. Let's see if I can do it. And thank you everybody for the wonderful comments and questions you shared so far. I think that's such a such a great vibe tonight. Let's see if this works. How many of you? Oh. Am I doing it? No. <laughs> Let me know if you want me to share it for you. I should. Uh... Uh, you know what? If it doesn't. Oh. Shall I share it for you, Giselle? Maybe, yeah. Yeah. I was going to show the extended play, but I guess we won't ah. get that today. So, yeah, there's a, there's a long well, version. I just wear. Okay. Maybe we can get Sparrow uh, while yeah. you look for that. For sure. There. Yeah. That's fine. So I'll share mine. No, it's not working. And just to tell everyone, we'll be sharing the links of this wonderful work. So don't worry, we will, we will share it with you soon. And I'm just going to be adding Sparrow screen now. We lost Giselle, so hopefully she's coming back. Oh, she's back. She's back okay. already. I think okay. so. That's good. <laughs> great, great. Okay, Sparrow, this is your work. So tell us about this work. What's the what's the title? What is yeah, it so this is, this is who, what. <laughs> um, and the, the title is basically exactly what I said when this came out of um, one of the GAN um, generated images when I was working, when I first started working with generated images. Um, it, it, this, this particular image is a, a return to the very beginning. Um, I decided sort of at the end of August, early September, that I was going to um, change focus a little bit and start working with plants and botanical images. So I've started doing that. But before I really got into that, I wanted to close out 
the, this AI figures that I'd been exploring. Um, and, and the way I thought to do that was to go back to, to the beginning. So there's, there's this image, which is the image that was used um, as sort of the parent for all of the other AI figures that, that I've done over the last half a year. Um, and, you know, you'll, you'll see a few more because I've, I've now gone in a slightly different direction from this same image. Um, so there's a, a few more that will be tokenized over the next couple of weeks um, that will wrap up sort of the, my series of, of AI figures. And then um, I'm going to start. So I'm doing another course with the, with the woman that I took the encaustic wax painting course with. Her name's Alicia Torme. And, and she, she has this course called Wild Botanicals, which I'm currently doing. Um, and so my work is going to sort of change focus to uh, botanical and bot botanical images and, and plants. Um, and I'm going to explore that a little bit to, to see where that goes, because following your curiosity is always the, the best, the best plan. Oh, yes, 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 of course <laughs> it is. Um, but, but again, you know, when I first came across this image and seeing just the textures that the AI generated stopped me in my tracks. And it, it's really interesting to look back now at this one again, um, a, like I said, a year later and, and see all of the variation and all of the depth that came out um, sort of from this one image. And mm -hmm. it's, it's not exhausted yet, right? There's still more to, to explore, which is the really cool thing with AI and, and generative um, GAN images. Yes, yes, absolutely. And I remember yesterday when, when you first showed me this piece, um, we were talking about the fact that not seeing the face or having not a clear um, identity of this presence in the work was somehow even more revealing. And that sort of also generated a bit of a trend within the crypto art space. So it is curious to see how artworks can actually be so strong and influential. Um, so I just wanted to know a few more words from you. How does that make you feel as an artist when you look at the work and sort of like have that intimate communication once it's, once it's there, once it's out of your mind and, you know, your, your creative self? Yeah, so I mean, I use this image actually as my profile picture for, for quite a long time. I felt such a connection or a resonance. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was just very, very compelling. Um, all of these pieces, all of the AI figures, I've felt ask you questions when you look at them. Um, they ask. They ask you about yourself. Um, it's almost like they're holding a mirror up, um, and and asking you, you know, what bits of you are missing, or you know, what about you can you see in this image? But, I mean, the the computer doesn't know anything about a human. It just knows roughly what a human figure, a human shape, a human form should be like. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's us and our own minds that are that are filling in sort of these scraps of pieces that the computer has put together to create a a, a being um, and. That in and of itself is is infinitely fascinating. Yeah, absolutely. 
Yeah, for sure. And yes, I've been seeing that work in your profile pictures and always wondered, where can I see the art? Where can I see the work? And then you told me that that was never tokenized. And so um, thank you for, for, you know, these opportunity because I think it's such a brilliant work. And uh, I hope it finds, you know, good people to, good, you know, look at it. And you make it into an edition or is it just a one of one? one of one this is this is this is a one of one I, I i couldn't imagine there being more than one of these um but like i said there's there's three or four more images that i've done um in this revisit of the these first um figures and they'll probably be um either editions of three or editions of five It looks like it's a sculpture made from paper and metal or something. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And a little drop of water in the back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The I love this texture. Wonderful. wonderful. Texture yeah. As well. yeah. Of this kind of like coat and weird sort of outfit. And it's, yeah, it's wonderful. It's odd in a way, but at the same time, it feels familiar, you know? feels like having a stranger presence, but at the same time, it feels like somebody that you've been knowing forever. That's how it feels to me. <laughs> Giselle, I would love to show your work now. Let's do it. Let's see, Let's see if it'll try now. Cool. And we also had a chance to see your You know what, your, your Serena, girl. I think it's, oh yeah. yeah. She, she like threw so many toys on me <laughs> a, little, a minute ago. Um, I think you should show the things because it seems like my computer just doesn't want to today. That's fine. Yeah, no worries at all. I had so many um, cute photos to, just, to show. <laughs> just let me know when the screen uh, starts. And I've got your profile here. Yes. So the new, okay. the new piece. So, so this one. I love these opportunities because it gets me to speak about what, it, what it's about. Um, and I, I, I will just speak while it's, uh, could you put it full frame or is it? If you hit yeah, the little, yeah. Let's, uh, yeah, let's give it a few seconds to load oh, sure. and then I will put it full frame. So yeah. I, I wrote some, I wrote some things down because I feel like I need to. So the, the art I create is about waves, emissions of being, those of perception, communication and interaction. I love to study the physical and emotional aspects of being. Um, like the catalysts of, of living, of life, the unseen waves that link all of us, the interactions, communications, reactions, and repercussions. It feels, the transmission of energy is at the core of my recent works. This, these here, the, the diamond waves, the water, the main element of our bodies is also a big subject. How we communicate digitally our thoughts and emotions relate directly to what is found in our in wave patterns. Like I feel like the water we have in us is making waves, but like electrical, like different, something else. Like I, I keep trying to find what it is about water that I love so much. Like what how do I show these like the macro, the macro elements of, of the colors that are coming out in, in this piece. I just, and not only this, this is like water and light. That's what the, this video is about, water and light. Some of my photography is just about light, like the, the wave of the light, the blueprint of the light, like the timestamp. That's, these are the things I've, I'm working with. They're such mm -hmm. lovely colors, Giselle. Thank you. Yes, yeah. We can now play the, the whole video, so we just give it a few seconds to load. Thank you for, for that. As a, kid, as a kid, you know, like the little bubbles in this, like, it's like I would stare in a bathtub at the little bubbles in the in the tank. Like, uh, in, you know, just as you're taking a bath and like putting them together, like seeing how they live together, like those bubbles, I, I would make stories about it. Like, it's like, I, 
and to be able yeah. to show it to people, I don't, I don't know. It's so great. It's really fun. What That's I the best love part about... of being an artist, isn't it? Is being able to share mm -hmm. the, the things that delight you yeah. with other people and finding other people that delight in those same things. It's yeah. Fabulous. Yes. Mm -hmm. And what I like about this piece and the way you described it is that even without using no words or no descriptions, you can somehow feel the same connection or the same, you know, um, yeah, intimacy to what water and light mean uh, to the body and to the mind. Um, and the spectrum of the light coming through these waves is um, fascinating because it feels something not natural in a way because the, the ge geometry of the shapes mm -hmm. in the video, um, you know, they're not always so... Uh, so much seen in nature, but at the same time, they're all familiar. And there's this sort of like uh, reflective double of the image that makes it infinite. Um, okay. So it is very interesting. And I want to ask you a slightly maybe more boring question, but I'm interested in that, if you don't mind, if you can tell us about the technique that you used to make this work, what is oh. Photography um, based I, or so, yeah, I, I shoot with a four by five video slash still camera. Um, this one is really pulled in. This is like really close up and uh, and picture. It's like it's showing the play between a screen, which is something that we are all looking at. We are we are <laughs> water and we are looking at light in the screen. Um, and that's what exactly this video is about, is about the light coming through, the pixels, the, the little, the art, the art, you know, the, the light, the, the infinite pieces, particles, like the texture is so sharp. I don't know, I, I, mm -hmm. how do you even, how do you even begin to, it's like the, the way we communicate digitally, like how do you show emotion? through the digital network. Mm. How, do you, how do you express an emotional feel through wires, you know? Like, we are, we are looking at that screen. We are that screen. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. It's fascinating, the, la the layers of it as well. So I, I kind of didn't notice the bubbles because I was fixated on the pixels. Mm. And mm -hmm. then I kind of shifted out and looked at the bubbles and suddenly it was like, step back from that so mm. that's what i really like i think it's very yeah. hypnotic and it's all, in yeah, the same way that you were talking about there's the, actually the another piece on super on, on um known origin that has the the hydro sunlight mandala is another one that's like fascinating to look at from what i was speaking to it's it's been a, it's a while it's a little far down it okay. might be like the next page or so what, a little lower? <laughs> it might be a bit slow uh, because I'm uh, one, one more, slow. one more show more. It's none of those. Just one more. It'll, it'll show up. The next. Yeah. There, on the bottom left. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that one. I should load it in a few moments, okay. And are these also from like the same series, these bubble wash or stay inspire similar? Similar, similar thoughts behind it. Mm -hmm. uh, the mm -hmm. bubble wash was the most contemporary, like, like, like the part, the one that's bringing the culture, actually what brought me to blockchain, which is the gaming of my son playing video games, uh, brought me to blockchain in, in some crazy fashion. This one, I love this one so much. Mm. I, I mean, yeah, the quality, again, extended play, high res version to the buyers of these pieces. <laughs> and is the like real water? Like, is this like sea this or? Is, this is river water. Or? Yeah, this is the sun, the sun reflecting off of water. Mm -hmm. Again, very macro. Like telephoto almost. 
if anything. It, it's usually a, yeah, you know, it's, um, it's a bit jumpy, but it's very relaxing. Like, yeah. Yeah, but the the natural shapes that it makes even just are so fascinating like to me. Look at that. That looks like a demon like, in some ways. <sighs> mm -hmm. It looks it's funny because it looks very yeah. similar to um a lot of the shapes that people naturally draw when they go into VR because they put symmetry on and they start doing these kind of mm -hmm. organic shapes. And they form kind of geometric shapes when they cross and stuff. So, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And the color that, play. And you get that special sort of experience of it as well. Mm. Yeah. Wow, brilliant. Thank you. Thank you for showing us this piece. And, uh, Have you done any 360? Sorry. Have you done any 360 uh, video work? What was that? Have you done any 360 video? 360. No, haven't gotten there yet. Uh, I think uh, I'm so I'm so I'm like the I'm like going like this where 360 will be like <laughs> not yet. But 360 is we don't like know a, in a different way. It could be, yeah. You know, I, I was against video for a very long time. I, I was like, I'm just a still life photographer. But you know, oh, and, and oh. now it's gone, now it's like out the door, like any any idea of what I will be or am, it's out the door, who knows? Who knows what I want to do a 360 collaboration with you and I want to do an AI collaboration. Let's, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes, collaboration. Yes, no, I mean that collaboration yes. all the way. Yes, 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 absolutely. And there's actually a couple of questions here, exactly one yeah. about collaborations, so um do you have any currently working on that you're currently working on i've got a couple yeah. in the I've got pipeline a i've got a lot i have to get to <laughs> nice so <laughs> that's what is so exciting about and this place yes yeah. and even together as yeah. as the the she art all of us all yeah. of us women together are also making a really cool collaboration coming soon too and that's yeah. exciting yeah, because small everybody change needs is to submit possible the, as well. Small, small leak. It's going to be a usable working tarot. Yes. With many <laughs> styles. Yes. And beautiful things. Yes, yes. That's um, wonderful. Wow. Yeah, that's go on, Angie. What, I was what's just coming say up that's, for you? Oh, um, I'm doing collaboration. Well, I haven't said it in public yet, and, I, and she hasn't, so she's okay about it. But I'm very excited to be doing a collaboration with Miss Al Simpson. Oh, so oh. we're going to be working on something <laughs> together. And uh, also, I'm very excited to be doing a collaboration with a lot of them. So Ooh. we're talking about one as well. And they're both artists that kind of drew me into the industry, so they're working for me. You know, there's something about it that I really connected to. So, and then there's so many of the she art artists that I want to collaborate with. But they're busy collaborating with each other at the moment. So I'm kind of thinking, right, once yeah, that's calmed I mean, down, there's there's two or three that we've talked about possibly collaborating that I would love to collaborate with. It looks like everyone is so excited to to. Um to see and learn more about all of these great collaborations coming up soon. So, wow, so exciting. Well, I, There's I so can't much believe not enough time. time. Yeah, yeah, we need more yeah. time. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and I can't believe there's already an hour that's gone by and, you know, we've been just mm -hmm. looking at a few works and discussing our thoughts and feelings around the crypto art space, but it's been so wonderful being surrounded by friends and people that are inspired by art and brought together by the fact that we all love what we do. So I thank you all so much for being here tonight and sharing with us the great and work that you've been audience. doing. And everyone in the yeah. audience, yes, you've been the real star, guys. Everyone sending yeah. comments and questions and thoughts. It's, yeah, it's great to have you, have your support every time. So. And thank you to David and the Known Origin team for bringing together such a great series. Ooh. <laughs>
<laughs> such a great way to uh, conclude this talk. <laughs> <laughs> the grand finale. <laughs> Well, I just want to give, you know, a beautiful big round of applause. <laughs> and thank you so much, Serena, you. for having us. It's been lovely once again. Oh, so it's awesome. a pleasure. It's a pleasure. And I'm so sorry, Giselle. Here we go. I forgot to to pass on your link to the non-origin page, but here we go. Right. We have it here. So there it is. You guys can see Giselle work. My name. <laughs> And then also Angel's got things coming up soon, so make sure you check that out. So everybody, thank you so much for being here tonight. Thank you for all this afternoon, this morning, whatever time is your side. <laughs> um, thanks again. It's been wonderful to be here with you all. And I guess we'll stay connected and see you soon across all the channels and social media. Thank you all so all much. Right. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.